what I uh, what I try to do. Um, so, for for crazy action angles, well, how can I put this? Uh, I think in order to get really interesting angles, well, first of all, you know, the the, the most like basic ones are going to be like um, like a down shot. You know, like down shots always look really good if you want someone to feel like they're in trouble. Um, or upshot if you want to to have someone feel like they're winning. Um, so these can be, uh, you know, like these are like little characters, right? These little like uh, inverted uh, exclamation marks. So this is kind of like um, your basic setup. I'm going to try, you know what, I'm going to... I'm going to try to find a way to show kind of, maybe this one ha is going to have like a triangle head, you know, triangle versus round. So we know who's who <laughs> and we're going to make it like Dragon Ball. It's going to be like in a desert or something. Cause that's also the thing is like, um, you can, when you practice boards, I think it's really like the best thing to do is to practice with like easier uh, prompts. So deserts are great um, because like it's not going to make it too hard on you for, for backgrounds. And, um, and that's why in a lot of anime like, you know, Dragon Ball or like Naruto or like, um, I don't know, there's countless animes where they battle in the desert. Um, I, th I think when they have like the crazy action, uh, they want to have a lot of animation because when you have the camera moving around, that's what's kind of going to give you, uh, that sense of like speed and, and spectacle. Cause an action sequence usually doesn't have a whole lot of story, like an action sequence, like, you know, when I mean story is like kind of like, like advancing the plot um but action isn't so much about plot it's it's about like spectacle as in um you know like when you're going to fire fireworks show like there like there's no story in a fireworks show all you're looking at is like how spectacular it is or when you're going to see something like Cirque du Soleil is like uh you're not there for the story you're just there to see like the crazy like stunts right so the, the, I think definitely for, for me, at least the way I look at action is just like, so spectacle in terms of um, like action, um, stunts. And I think, uh, and I said uh, like movement, right? You know, like, um, so movement you can get through uh, I, like character animation um, and you can also get through uh, camera so I think for example like I kind of like did my setup like oh so this guy it's gonna be triangle versus round um, and here we're kind of like, just from shot one and shot two, we're like, okay, this one, uh, we're probably thinking, okay, this is kind of me extrapolating, but we're probably thinking this one is our protagonist. Uh, why do we think he's the protagonist? Because we started with him. Like, just because, because he's in the first shot, usually the first person we look at is like, oh, this is the person I want to root for. And on top of that, this is a down shot. So it's kind of like, he's a little bit the underdog. Like when you see the shot, you're like, this person, I don't know if they're gonna win. Uh, this person, you're like, oh, they're in a position of power. Um, so usually that's, I mean, this is kind of like the very, um, kind of like basic, right? This is kind of like the 101, right? Of like, uh, uh, face off um, you kind of usually want to start your character with your protagonist 
uh, not in a position of power because you want the, your audience to root for them. So you want them to kind of have, um, like to be the underdog a little bit, right? Because uh, if they're already in a position of power, then it's kind of like, oh, yeesh. Like, why are you fighting someone that's like weaker than you, you know? <laughs> uh, not, I, you're not a good guy. <laughs> I need you to be a good guy. Um, and good guys fight the people who are more powerful, right? <laughs> is, is that how it goes? Um, I think I think that's how it goes. Um, so I think you can kind of start like the action already. You can, so here we infer like there's gonna be like a face off, right? Um, the the problem that I have done like like the, the main problem that we're seeing in these two thumbnails is kind of like you know this like 180. Like here he's in the right side of the screen. This one. Probably. I don't have him on the left side of the screen. Now this is better. So when I do thumbnails, this is the level of of details I do for a thumbnail. Like because you know, like if I if I realize this is a terrible shot, I want to be able to go like this, boom, and then kind of like maybe I want it to be a little bit more perspective. Maybe it's even more like this. I don't know. Uh, what I'm saying. What I'm trying to say is just like I want to be able to to like delete something, and um, really fast and not feel bad that I'm like deleting it, right? Like I I want to be able to to just go over these drawings, and um, and like just throw them away if I'm like okay this this is really not working. Maybe we want to see his face a little bit, you know? Maybe we want to know how he feels. Um, I think if we want to kind of like uh, show that there's like a little bit of like tension. Usually like small camera moves are really great. Um, so the way I draw them in thumbnails is like this. I do this from A to B. This is just like, I'm just kind of like going into the setup. So, you know, you kind of have like this drift and then you can have this drift over there. Um, All right, and then, oh, wow, this is really starting now. What is going to go, like, what's going on? And I think with action, um, and so I'm trying to go back to your question, the thumbnailing process. So this is kind of showing the thumbnailing process. Uh, crazy action angles and fun expressions. So uh, I think, you know, like you can build up this, you know, like in Dragon Ball, you can build up this, the tension as much as you want by having like these kind of shots kind of like going from one to another. You can even really, uh, like here you kind of introduce the characters and then maybe you want to introduce the environment. Maybe we want to be like, we want to make it really clear like, oh, look, he's on top of this like mountain, right? And this guy is like on the very bottom and it looks kind of like this. Um, I... I like to think of my environments, like in Thundercats War, what was really great is that, I mean, uh, well, this is kind of flat. Usually you want to try to avoid making something kind of too flat when you're going to go into action because uh, flat is really good for comedy. Um, but usually when you have a little bit more of an angle, then it kind of starts being a little bit more dramatic. Um, yeah. It's still kind of... This this has got more, um, this has got more angles to it. It's still kind of flat because of this line right here. You know, when I say that a shot is flat, it means that like you have like one of your lines is like this. <laughs> your your ground is like this. No matter what you do, like if it's a even if it's a room, boom, flat. Or like even if it's like a school, like South Park or whatever. You know, it's like um, I don't know how it goes. It's like this flat shot. Um, so this is a little bit flat, but it's kind of okay because we kind of gave it a a little bit more of an angle on the ground. Uh, clouds. I think also if you want to add some drama uh, with your environment, because that's also the, like kind of what's kind of tricky with uh, boards is that you've, you're always thinking about everything, right? You're thinking about your characters, you're thinking about your angles, but you're also thinking about like your composition. So I like, usually, I don't know, this is, this is a, a me trick. It's not just a me trick. 
Um, but like clouds can be really great to kind of add drama. So for example, you know, like this guy right here, like, like if you wanted to add a little bit more drama, you could have clouds that kind of go like this, right? You know, like kind of like go in the circle and then like the clouds are just kind of like, you're like, ooh, wow. It kind of gives, kind of almost gives this impression of that there's like this crazy lens, but you don't even have to do that much, uh, actual, um, like classical perspective in the way that like clouds are organic. So, uh, you can kind of, you can do whatever you want with clouds really, which is really great because they can really help, um, when you're trying to do, a uh, an environment or an environmental setup. So here, all of a sudden, you're like, whoa, uh, crazy shot, even though all we did was just draw some clouds in the circle around the character. Uh, so that already kind of gives the impression of an angle. Um, and that also kind of, and also just the fact that the character is slightly tilted. Um, you know, like I didn't draw the character like this, like straight up like this. I drew him a little bit at this angle like this because that will give a little, like this was a cheat. I kind of gives the impression that like the perspective is a little bit like this because you know, the body, the body is going like this, right? You know, like these lines are like converging towards like a higher point instead of being like parallel. Um, so that's a trick. So here you can also do like some tricks with clouds, like, you know, like, ooh, like, Maybe these these clouds are kind of like we're kind of that they kind of like point towards this bad guy a little bit more, um, yeah. So that can help with like kind of creating um, angles. I'm someone who's like very much into cheats, and then uh, let's say let's say like this is now we're gonna be like okay, you know like spaghetti western they've looked at each other for a bunch of time all right tension is at its uh top someone's gonna start so um i think with action what you kind of really want to do is you i mean i think in an anime they do that really well uh also uh is breaking down all the moments so i'm gonna kind of so pacing um and pacing is actually this is actually a really tough skill to master. I think people who are like musicians have a, like for them, it kind of comes naturally. Um, but pacing is really important in action because you kind of want to have moments when things are going fast and then things are going slow. And then uh, I like to compare it a lot <laughs> to like EDM uh, music because uh, EDM is really good at doing this like spectacular pacing. Like, you know, those like, uh, tracks that kind of go like you have your beat and you kind of like okay I know like I kind of I'm getting a feeling what the scene is like this track is going to be and then they like ramp up with like those um I'm really terrible in musical yeah and then like they have like and then as things are ramping up then like you can kind of be like uh oh wow like maybe it's like the characters running you know like that's kind of like the feeling that you get is like they're running or like they're they're uh, aiming a shot and then like you have like the bass drop and then it's like like it's kind of that moment when everything is still and you're kind of like uh kind of like gasping for your next breath and then like when the when the drop actually hits that's when like your punch actually hits or like whatever like your character is doing so i think a lot of that is really important to remember because it's like that's kind of what's going to give your audience that feeling of like <gasps> like kind of being on a roller coaster uh because that's kind of Ideally, that's the feeling you want to achieve. Uh, and those shots are kind of like, all of these shots are gonna, uh, this is kind of like setting the beat, right? You know, like you're kind of like, uh, this guy, this guy, this environment, and then, okay, like, let's start this. So maybe like we have um, this, like the character is gonna have an A and B pose, which is like, A is like a start pose usually. Um, so a start pose, what a start pose is, is kind of like um, like a rest, like either it's a pose from a previous shot just to hook up the shots, or it's a pose uh, that is like kind of like a more resting pose. So let's so like I'm here is gonna be our B pose and our A pose is probably like oh I forgot he's a triangle head. 
So it's, he's kind of like this. It would be a pose that's very similar to this. He's kind of like this, and then as he uh, as he's gonna be like, okay, here we go. He kind of like goes like this, right? He kind of like it's like called a anticipation, you know? Like you kind of see maybe like his uh, arms are like he's getting ready, right? You can even have like you can even have like a lot of these shots like like a bunch of close-ups because the more close-ups you do the more or like the more cuts you do it's not close-ups the more cuts you do the more of like a quicker rhythm you're gonna achieve in your audience's uh, perception so like maybe he like he's like Shh, uh kind of like and then maybe his feet also you know like it goes from like this to maybe like you know like you know how they do like an anime this like like the rocks i don't know you know yeah it, exactly like depending on what exactly you're doing uh like because like i'm showing this with these two characters facing off right but this can also you can apply all of this for example in a racing competition like it's exactly the same thing except that instead of like um like if it's two pilots racing instead of them kind of looking at each other like that um it, you would probably kind of set them up like you know like in the car you know like uh maybe you have like a car like this and a car like this you know and it's like a little bit of an up angle uh and then like uh, i don't know hold on like i'm going on this tangent and now i have to drive <laughs> If it's if it's an up angle, our protagonist would be here and the bad guy would be here, and then you know like you're kind of like inside of the cars, but then like these kind of shots, like that would be the the foot hitting the um, the um, the gas, right? <sighs> then if you want, you can add like some of these lines. Depends on the style of the show. Sometimes you can't really add. And, uh, and then, uh, I think also, like, uh, um, I'm just kind of going to draw this so it kind of is easier to read. And then, the like, that's kind of your setup. Um, I forgot where my, okay, here it is. Four, five. And then, if he starts running, let's say he starts running. I mean... You know, kind of like Naruto style or whatever. Um, if it was Dragon Ball, he would probably like disappear. You know, with with their like little shunk, and then he would appear right up, right at the other guys, uh, like right next to the the bad guy, like probably behind the bad guy. So we have a little bit like surprise. <laughs> but uh, for this, let's say he's just like running, and. Um, so that's kind of where now we want to use camera lenses that are uh, a little bit like crazier. So let's say, uh, and so this you can achieve either by looking at a lot of like camera lenses, like like a lot a lot of references. So for example, GoPros with with the fish eye, or maybe like super wide. Um, we kind of want to go in angles that are not your typical lens. So your typical lens of camera would give you something like, um, like, like a typical camera lens. Here you would have like a flat horizon line and the character like this. But if you wanna like kinda have, a, like kinda get this idea that it's like a little bit of a wide angle, you kinda wanna, so you're not seeing the actual horizon line uh like we're not so far removed that we see the edge of the planet right it's just the, it's just a lens <laughs> it's just the camera lens that bends the horizon line right uh i don't know if that makes sense does that make sense Yeah, 
Let's see. I'm like going to Google it right now because I'm not sure which one it is. I know it's a lens. Uh, and then a band horizon, I guess. Let's see. Uh, the amount of curvature that appears in photograph depends on... Okay, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, this, you know what? I'm actually going to grab copy image and then I'll just paste it in there. Boom. Let's look at those together because that is exactly what we're... Flat Earth? Oh, man. Debunking Flat Earth? <laughs> All right, we're not talking about conspiracies here. Uh, what we're looking at is uh, lens distortions. Some lenses distort lines and will bend or straighten lines in the photograph. Distortion adding more curvature. So that's kind of what we're looking for right now. Neutral distortion. Distortion straighten the horizon. All right, so uh, I was wrong because if you have your uh, if you have your horizon line completely straight, apparently. That is your lens distorting the horizon. Um, altitude. Well, and I, I really like this graph because it kind of gives you an idea of how far you are. Altitude 50 kilometers. That's pretty high. Altitude 1,000 kilometers. Yeah, you're on top of a pretty big mountain here. Um, but you want to use these because, like, these kind of curvature because they will help sell. Oh, okay, it's back. Cool. Um, so um, I think a good way of like talking about it is like a uh, field of view or like lens distortion. I am not sure exactly what is the name for this lens. Uh, I think it's a little bit closer to, cause let's see, fish eye, what, what do the, Fish eye do. Fish eye lens. It like fish eye makes it look like copy image. It makes it look like this. Oh, like this. That's a that's a fish eye. So um, those are just things to like. I would say those are just things to practice uh, on the side to feel familiar with this kind of perspective and kind of drawing characters in this perspective. These can these are tricks. These are tricks that help you kind of like make a scene more spectacular. But you don't have to always use these, right? Um, and then like when the character is running, I think it's kind of cool to. That's when you start doing like, your camera work. So uh, I think probably. Let's say we start kind of close on him, sort of. He's like running and then we're gonna have like a truck out from A to B. Because maybe, like if you do a truck out, he's probably gonna do something pretty spectacular. Um, so running, running, running. He's running this way, right? He's still the triangle. And then uh, maybe he's gonna like, do an antic like do these kind of like um you know like shh, uh kind of like anticipation and then so that would be our a pose uh and then b is like anticipation because he like crouches and then c would be like shh, jump so I think the, the thing in action as well is that because like I said, you want to do like spectacle, it, it's, I, well, this is my style, right? Like there's a lot of different styles, but you kind of want to have like some uh, special effects, like probably here's like some smoke or like if it's not smoke, like, I don't know. I think like this is just kind of like representing the air kind of, <laughs> I think it looks cool. I think it kind of like sells the idea. And then if the showrunner or the the director is like kind of like, no, this is too heavy on special effects, like they can take it out. But at the, you know, like um, having something that shows that like, oh, there's an impact, like this uh, 
the fact that this character is jumping is kind of like uh, having a little bit of like an impact on the environment. It doesn't have to be these. It can be just like rocks, you know. He's like, you know. And then you kind of want to have a pose where it's like, uh, that's like the pose they're like, bah! And then that's the pose where it's just like, shh, you know, kind of like uh, jumping through the air. Obviously, I'm going to like draw them like here. They're kind of like supernatural heroes. Like in Thundercats, we, we, we did that a lot. Like they were, like they could jump. I mean... I think we kind of had to make sure, like, they didn't have, like, supernatural powers, but we can ca we could kind of, like, go over the top a little bit, like, um, it wasn't too crazy realistic in terms of, like, uh, physics, from what I remember. So you can do one of these. No. Um. And then, so you kind of have this thing where, like, your, your camera, like, I don't know if it's something that, like, like, um, is easy for uh for you to imagine but i think as you're drawing these kind of thumbnails try to kind of imagine the feeling of like the camera pulling out so you definitely have the background becoming bigger and bigger and a character that's kind of like uh coming towards camera so um and then ta and then um do you like maybe you want to have a cut where it's like oh something happened and and then maybe we want to hold it for a little bit maybe now we're like ooh something good's going to happen like Maybe, like, so he was screen right the whole time, so we gotta keep him screen right. And then maybe it's something like this, right? He's just like, oh, he just jumped. And then all of a sudden we're like, oh, maybe he's, maybe he's actually gonna win towards this guy, right? Like, uh, against this guy. I don't know, my English. But, um, and then, like, you can have a pan that kind of goes up. So that's kind of the thing with action. The, the more you can keep your camera moving, I think it's kind of like the best. Like, so since since we jumped this way, like kind of like uh, from top to, uh, from bottom to top, and from a little bit from right to left, we kind of want to have the camera move, mimic the same action, the same um, uh, movement, right? So we're gonna probably do something a little bit like this, you know? So now it's like, our character jump like like our character jump like this, and our cam and our camera keeps going like this. So we kind of keep the momentum going, even though even though the characters are not moving, uh, the we keep the momentum of like the movement. So I don't know where I wrote this movement. Woohoo! Uh, thanks to our to the camera work, and so now we've been with our. We've been with the protagonist for a couple of shots. We're, we've seen him like, hmm, ksh, da da da, ba, and then now we maybe we want to check in with our uh, with our um, antagonist for a little bit. You know, that's the typical moment when you kind of go um, in anime where they're like, huh, you know, he's like grinning and is like, ha ha, so because we had our character right here jump and go all like kind of gain on our antagonist for a split second it's okay for our uh antagonist to be on a down shot first of all because down like you know up shots and down shots are always more spectacular and it always feels i don't know i think it always makes things a little bit more like interesting uh to look at and maybe i don't know Maybe he jumps too, or um, uh, he definitely has like a reaction. Uh, like I let's let's think, and and so obviously when you do action, you need to come up with a lot of good ideas. <laughs> so maybe he doesn't jump. Maybe jumping is uh, overrated. Maybe he uh, what could he do? Uh, he could throw something at him, you know, or maybe he's like a power. Mm hmm. Yeah. Um, he could grab his arm right now. They're kind of too far. But let's see. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Maybe, you know, hey, let's be crazy. 
Like, let's do, let's go a little Dragon Ball. Like, <laughs> like, like maybe he jumps as well, you know? He, so I think what would be good here is because we've already kind of done this thing where um, it's like, now it's, we're kind of starting the whole thing, grin. Like, hey, you know what? Maybe this is the moment when we go full Dragon Ball and he just like disappears, you know? It's just like, ch -ch -ch -ch. and you're like, what, what? You know, like, like you kind of want to have this thing where like the audience is like, oh, where is he now? And for usually it's really great if you can have your, uh, your audience, um, like, if you can have one of the characters on the screen uh, uh, be the mirror for your audience. So if our character, if the antagonist just disappeared, then we want to catch in with Triangle. And Triangle is like, wait, what? I kind of like, uh, what happened? Um, and I think... Uh, I think ideally here somewhere you put a little bit camera move, probably we're just kind of like closing him on him or something, you know, it's cause we're like, Ooh, something. Uh, and so, and then, so we, we have like an, an a where he's like, what, what he's, and he's still drifting. Right. We, we still, we want to keep our characters always moving so you can achieve that. Like here, he's always, he's also moving. So, um, you would probably start him. This is an old school thing, but like, you know, like this is a um, chart for like <laughs> animation. <laughs> so that would be pose A, B, C, D. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's kind of like, uh, if you want to show, if you have, like this chart right here is kind of like useless because all the, like I did all my poses at the same um, uh, distance. I think these pose like a chart is really interesting if you want to show like for example like something like this it's like okay a b c d and this and because here you're you're showing like whoosh kind of like okay like you know like you can expect like things to get like blah, blah, blah. like uh it's um ease out or ease in it yeah ease in yeah so that's kind of like you want to use a lot of these kind of like a lot of these kind of things because that always feels really good when something like kind of uh has an acceleration or deceleration because it's it it, it like has um mom like momentum like whereas when something is just going like equal it's just kind of like boring um so here we want to have a little bit more of that like he, he barely moves right but it's like a little bit of like uh one of those right and then he's like what what is going on maybe the camera is kind of like uh maybe he's moving a little bit uh faster than the camera because the camera is just doing a, a very small shift and um in order for this for the camera to show that it's moving you have to draw some clouds so maybe we we want to have some some like dynamic clouds you know maybe something like this like oh wow uh and so that's the A, and then all of a sudden, what we kind of want to do, because he teleported, we don't, okay, we don't want our hero to have it too easy, or we don't want to have our, we don't want to have our protagonist to have it easy, because life is hard, and, and, uh, <laughs> and the audience uh, will always, um, will always, um, kind of empathize with a character who doesn't have it easy like they want to like the audience is really gonna connect with the character that is struggling and that it like uh that that is a little bit on on the on their level right like you want to have a character that they don't really know everything just yet because that's how we feel we don't know everything so um he's like oh what is going on here so he would probably be here and then and then this guy is just like already behind him and he's already got an attack uh ready i don't know you know 
maybe he's got his feet like this or I don't know you, you can come up with like really cool action poses like usually when I'm like I'm not, my repertoire of like action poses is um I would say I'm not the, the I don't have the most original choreographies out there because uh, I haven't watched as much action as like a lot of like the super great action board artists out there but um uh, that's something that you can easily uh, get better at by like watching uh, Jackie Chan movies or Michael Bay movies or you know all that kind of jazz so this guy kind of pops out here and then I think then it kind of depends on what you're going for um, if you want to have it if you if you want I think that would be kind of cool if we were to have a couple more reaction shots. Reaction shots are like, um, it's, it's very Dragon Ball. But it's also like, it's an easy way to kind of like add more cuts and kind of build suspense. Because here, it's like, ksh, suspense, where is he? Boom. Oh, no, behind you. And then, so now he's screen left, right? Now he's on the left and he's on the right. So we want to probably have our character turn around and be mm. like, uh, oh no. I think actually what we want to do first is be with the, with the antagonist because we're like, no. So we want to stay with the no feeling. Turns around. Ah! And then, boom, he like kicks him. So here you can have like, um, that would be a good moment to have something like a little bit more animated. Uh, probably. Maybe he like, he, maybe he does a cool stunt, you know, like, like this is a moment when like you do a little bit of choreography. Also they in the air, so it's already pretty cool, but, um, Um, this is kind of like, this is kind of like the, I think we want to have something that is kind of similar to this angle where like the way that I kind of think about these angles is like, I tried to think uh, like when I tried to think about these scenes, I'm like, what is the, m the most impactful frame, right? What would be the frame that is like the most, um, spectacular. So for me right now, what I'm thinking, and these are just thumbs. And this is just my first pass, right? So maybe I'll go over this again, and I'll be like, oh, this is this kind of sucks. But um, right now, my brain, like, it's really important to keep your, your brain just going and just like, uh, ah. So maybe this is going to be my impact frame. And so maybe, so I, I start with this frame, the, like, the quotation mark most spectacular. And then maybe I start... Um, Maybe I start with him. His foot is like this. He would be more like over there. It would be kind of like the same pose, you know? Like maybe his foot is like closer to camera because it's like, wow, angles, uh, perspective. And then he like has it all the way up to the, to like the very top. Like we can have like a Jojo kind of type of crazy pose. I love camp, so I think it's funny to have like, kind of like over the top kind of actions. <laughs> and then whoosh, and then you're gonna follow his foot, right? Cause I think that's kind of fun to kind of have something like when someone is like, gonna do a punch, you can follow the hand, the fist. Gonna do a kick, you can follow the foot. Um, and you can use like a little bit of stretch and squash if you're kind of like feeling up for it. So probably, like your camera would kind of go, um, this is kind of hard to draw in thumbs, uh, mostly because I would have to draw like, your camera is gonna go like this. It's gonna follow the action, right? So that would be, that would be one, two, three, four. Shpa! And then, uh, we kind of want to hold 
like the the like because this is animation, so it doesn't have to be realistic. Uh, like, in in movies, don't have to be realistic. So when you have that impact, bah, and then it's like, uh, and then you, if you want to do, you can do more reaction shots if you're like feeling crazy, and then you want to see kind of like the effect of all this. So, and we can we kind of have our character going like, you know, like one of these like smoke bombs <laughs> he just all the way out there so um yeah this is just one kick and um but this is how you make things feel kind of like spectacular right it's just like you you add all this rhythm um obviously and you add all these camera moves you add all these crazy angles and um and then you want to and you have all these like kind of dram and then you can also do like a trick that I really like is kind of like in video games when you're like ba 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 you see the three thing the same thing happening three times but in different angles so we see it here like boom like from far away and then we kind of want to feel the pain a little bit so boom it happens here again like this you know <sighs> like we see him like hitting the ground again <laughs> wow must really hurt um kind of thing and these are thumbnails like you know you don't have to your drawings don't really have to be that good it's just mostly for you it's mostly for you to feel like oh like this is a blueprint and now and after that i'm gonna make it look really good so that would be like take one take two and then take three what's another angle where it's like down, up, and then, um, trying to think, maybe we just, uh, maybe like a far angle, maybe something that's kind of more like, uh, more like almost flat, you know, bam. You know. Boom. Yeah. I don't know if this angle makes sense. It's kind of like, it's a little bit flat. Pa, pa, pa. Three times. Three is a good number, usually. I don't know. Some people like two. I like three. Um, and this happens really fast. And then we kind of want to have the reaction shot of like, I mean, this is all for drama, right? Uh, like, you know, like, so we have, like, all the, like, rocks. We see his body uh, a little bit, like, his arm or whatever. He's, like, Ugh, like, kind of trembling. Um, this is, like, a... Um, and maybe uh, we... And then that would be, like, the apos. I don't know if this drawing makes any sense. It probably doesn't make any sense. But that's him. That's triangle right here. And then he like gets up, you know, we have a little bit of a, like a camera that's like panning up. I'm just finishing this little thing and then we'll go over your, uh, we'll go over your boards. This is just to kind of show, like, this is kind of like, I, I'm just showing you the process mostly because my thinking process, just because this is how I board, uh, and because it's kind of hard to explain it in text it's kind of easier for me to just like kind of explain it as i go and just kind of like and this is a very first pass right you know like you, you kind of like do this and it's like ugh, like eighth so that would be your a frame like i guess like this if this is the the b frame Like, that would mean that you're going, okay, hold on. I'm trying to explain what I'm trying to do here. You would probably be punching in on his face a little bit, right? Like this, A, B, and that's like the A pose. So let's say, I'm just gonna write it one and two. Two would be this, two, and he would be here, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, something like this. I don't know if that makes sense. Oh, he's kind of like uh, trying to get up. You know, he was like kind of like in this hole. You know what? That's good that you mentioned that because if you don't know what he's trying to do, it probably means we're missing a shot. And that's why it's good to show your boards to somebody else because sometimes, you know, you're really in your, like, I get really in my head and then I like things make a lo whole lot of sense to me. And then somebody else sees it and they're like, uh, I don't understand what's going on. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, whoopsie. So it would be good if it's like, if it's like, um, like we see exactly where he is, you know, like after the smoke, like the smoke dissipates, you know, we have like all the smoke and he's gonna like, ugh. Kinda in this, um, in this ditch with like the rocks. If that makes sense. So that's also the, the, the thing is to like, see how rough my thumbs are. <laughs> and they make sense. Hmm? <laughs> it's really like, I mean, for me, they make sense. Like when you're going to do your thumbs, like, it's okay that they make sense only to you or like, they don't have to look like what I do. You know, like I just, I just do this because this is how I draw. But, um, like some people, I've, I've seen a lot of other people's thumbs and their thumbs are just kind of like something like this. And I'm like, wow. Okay. But for them, they know exactly, you know, what they, <laughs> what they are trying to do. Um, and because like, these are kind of big, but honestly, like if you want to, um, if you want to draw even smaller, because the smaller you can draw, like, um, the faster you can be, right? So, um, yeah, he's kind of like, Ugh. and then we kind of cut to this kind of like shot where it's kind of like, like, these are the rocks. There's maybe even some smoke and he's kind of like getting up, like going up like this. Ugh. And then he's like trembling and it's so hard. And then we have like another reaction shot of like, Maybe he's in the foreground, like, no, my life sucks, everything hurts. And then the guy on the top is like, ha, 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 you thought you could beat me, but you're just still like a level, uh, I don't know, you're not even a level one yet, and I am a level uh, 100, ha, 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 something like that, you know. Obviously, with better, better dialogue, better, more quirky, whatever. Um, but yeah, that's kind of how I go about it. Like, obviously, like, um, then, like, you could have all these different kind of, like, um, I think on Thundercats, something that we did a lot that I think, uh, I'll just, I'll just kind of wrap it up with this, is, uh, we used these very cartoony cameras that kind of give a lot of, like, kinetic energy. So, um, like, for example, this would have been like a good, like this kick would have been a good moment to use these cameras, which are, um, the way you get these very kinetic cameras or like you do basically, uh, you know, one of these, right? Like you, you start them, you start them with a, you basically do this animation chart. Very, uh, it's better to do with thirds, which is really hard to draw but yeah and then boom like you kind of like go very slow and then you know your camera like goes like really really fast in this like direction for example and then it will stop in that same fashion so like this like and so and that would be this in reverse um and when you when you use these like these are actually kind of easy to do. Um, try using them in your boards. Um, they're really fun and cartoony and they really spice up like your action, especially you can use this for any moment. Like it could be like someone saying like a line, he's like, you're never gonna get, you're never gonna get, uh, I don't know. I don't know. What are the motivations of these characters? 
Yeah. Something like, you're never, you're never going to hurt my dog. I don't know. Ha ha. Of course I'm going to hurt your dog because I'm an evil guy. Ha ha. I don't know. <laughs> you know. Uh, <laughs> like, you know. It's kind of like how this goes. Uh, and then you can use this for like punches, for like uh, going from, and you can use it from um, any direction. Like it's just that like this specific uh, motion feels really nice. And then uh, I'm trying to think about other angles. Yeah, exaggerating the perspective is gonna like go a long way as well. So for example, very small face and then big feet, you know. Yeah, and the good thing with Thundercats was that it was super cartoony, so you can really push these things, you know. Um, and I'm gonna, I'm probably gonna end this little presentation before we jump into your boards uh, by uh, saying like, definitely go look at the the episodes that you like, the scenes that you like, go frame by frame, and kind of really look at how it works, because there's a lot of cheating around. Um, this is really me explaining my thumbs process, kind of how I think about things, kind of... Uh, oh, yeah, I didn't really do a whole lot of stunts. Uh, this, I just had this one stunt. Um, for stunts, definitely, yeah, look up, like... Uh, it's good to look up, I don't know, wrestling videos or... Oh, yeah, I talked about Michael Bay because uh, he's really good at making things feel really big because... Um, He's good at doing things, moving at different pace in the same shot. So he has the character moving, the camera moving, and background elements moving. So the way that you're gonna make these def different elements move at different pace is gonna make it feel really, really awesome and, and like big. Um, I think in every frame of painting, they go over it. Uh, but let's pretend when you have like a character that's like this, that's running character is running right and then and then you have like let's say um they're running on uh, i don't know they're running on something that's moving so that's kind of crazy you know like maybe this is like a i don't know it's a snake it's a big snake so in order to show that it's a big snake uh you kind of want to have this kind of like going in a in a cosine like this so maybe it's gonna go like this I think Jeremy Polgar, who was my director on Thundercats, did this with the in the long Gone Gulch uh, uh, pilot. He animated this shot where there's kind of, like it's kind of undulating. So you have your character that's kind of like going up and down as they're running, right? Because this big snake is like, woo, whoosh, whoosh. and on top of that, in the background, like maybe we. Maybe we're on the top of the planet or whatever. I don't know. Something crazy. Maybe we're like in Secret of Mana and this is the, the big dragon. Um, uh, and so and so you can have like the, the planet that's just moving moving just a little bit. You know, it's just moving from this to this. But we're going to notice it and it's going to feel like really grand. And on top of that... Uh, what else could be moving in the foreground? In the foreground, you could have, like, things that are moving, like, I don't know, like a cloud or something, you know, like, because uh, we're in the atmosphere at this point or something. So, yeah, I think, um, I think that was it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let me, let me turn 